Yo, 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 this is large of another video, and this right here is going to be my thoughts on Season 6 of NXT so far, and what I think should happen down the future and down the line of NXT. Well, you know, as we all know, NXT started, the new season of NXT started on uh, the 20th of this week, uh, 20th of you know, June. Uh, Wednesday started on Wednesday, but, you know, people didn't really get to see footage until yesterday, so, um, you know, I seen it yesterday, and, um, my thoughts on NXT, the new season, you know, it's good already, you know, the atmosphere, the crowd was amazing, you know, the commentary was damn good, don't I miss commentary like this, JR and William Regal together. That's the ultimate commentary team right there, man. And Byron Saxon, he's Byron Saxon, he's pretty good. You know, people criticize Byron Saxon. I guess I wonder why they criticism criticize him so much. Um, I don't know, but anyways, I mean, Jr. and William Regal, that's like the ultimate, you know, commentary duel. And um, I look forward to watching more episodes with J.R. And, um, and William Regal on commentary together. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Well, um, well, first up, you know, we had, you know, a, a package. Well, to start off the show, we had a package. Um, and the intro, of course, for NXT. And as I was looking through the intro, you know, I noticed that Jinder Mahal... You know, WWE's throwing him in, in the bushes onto this NXT show. Um, do I necessarily want to see his ass every week? No, I don't. I don't want to see Jinder Mahal. But, hey, you know, I know I've been criticizing Jinder Mahal in the past. But, you know, Jinder Mahal, you know, the only thing I really don't like about Jinder Mahal is his gimmick. You know, it, he's boring, you know. I mean, Jinder Mahal, he's got all the talent in the world, man. You know, but that'll be, please, like, change his gimmick up a little bit. You know, do something else with him, you know, because have him trying to be the modern-day Iron Sheik is not going to work if you can't cut a promo like Iron Sheik. You know, at least Iron Sheik, you know, made you laugh. Calling somebody a jabroni, a jabroni, a jabroni. So, yeah, I mean, that'll be, if you want to make this guy the modern Iron Sheik, yeah, do more with him. So, hopefully NXT will do something for Jenna Mahal like it kind of did for Tyson Kidd and Michael McGillicuddy and JTG. Kind of save all their careers. So, you know, I hope, you know, it can improve. I'm not, not saying that Jenna Mahal's career is in jeopardy or anything like that. But, you know, they, they obviously put him on the show for improvement. So, I hope he gets the improvement that he needs because he has all the talent in the world. He just needs to... You know, find a little bit more personality and charisma. So maybe the show will do it for him. Um, but anyways, um, first we start. Yeah, to start the show with a course with an intro in a video package. Before that, it was a pretty good in, uh, package to show why you know these superstars are on NXT and why and how they will pack. Well, how they will fight their way to the top to get on Raw and SmackDown. I guess you can put it. That's what it all adds up to, I guess. You know, so I look forward to that. Uh, then, you know, then JR comes out, you know, introduces the crowd uh, to the new interim general manager, which is Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, and the son of a plumber. Dusty Rhodes. And Dusty Rhodes announces the main event for tonight uh, Michael McGillicuddy versus. Tyson Kidd for the, what, third or fourth time. This would be the third or fourth encounter, I do believe. Um, yeah, man, keep it rolling, you know. Tyson Kidd, Michael McGill, I don't mind seeing that. You know, it's it will always turn out to be a good match because those two are super talented. Um, Bret Hart and um, Mr. Perfect and whoever the rest of Michael McGillicuddy's trainers and, you know, their respective trainers, you know, they did very good jobs with training both Michael McGillicuddy and Tyson Kidd. So, big ups to those guys who are responsible for Tyson Kidd and Michael McGillicuddy's in-ring work and, you know, and all that stuff. So, um, then, you know, we get uh, a package, a video package introducing 
Bo Dallas, and this is why I like, you know, you don't send a complete stranger out there and expect the crowd to cheer him on. You gotta play something like a video package, you know. So they did that here, and you know, that was so good. That was good. WWE, I like that. You know, they had a video package introducing Bo Dallas, you know, and uh, it was a good package. Uh, then Bo Dallas came out, you know, for his match with Rick Victor, another good talent. Uh, Rick Victor pretty much got squashed, I guess you can say. He had a little bit of offense, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a squash, but, you know, Victor, you, you know, he had a short end of the stick here by a long shot. So, uh, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, Victor lost this matchup. Um, Bo Dallas, my thoughts on Bo Dallas already. Well, I seen his work on FCW, so it wouldn't be anything new if I said this. This guy is extremely talented, and it would seem that this guy is so, so, so experienced, and he's only 21 years old. And this, I mean, this guy can go. I mean, Bo Dallas, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say put him on the roster right now, but, I mean, as far as his personality and his ring skills go, definitely put him on the main roster. But it'll take time for him, to, for the crowd to really buy into him like that. Because he doesn't have what people would say, like an outstanding, I don't know, like an outstanding feel. Kind of like a Seth Rollins or a Jeff Hardy or a Dean Ambrose and guys like that, you know. Bo Dallas has to find that, that thing that ha that will make him stand out from the others. So, yeah, he has to find that, and then definitely he'll click with the WWE Universe, I think. That's in my opinion. But anyway, Bo Dallas, pretty good match. Not enough time, though, but good match anyway. Uh, the next, we get kind of like a raw rebound, and then we get a Seth Rollins video package uh, promo introducing him, and he'll be making his debut next week on NXT. So, definitely good to see, you know, NXT and WWE introducing you know their characters introducing their roster that is good and then we kind of get like another video package oh then oh yeah we get another video package um and then we get a match or well, i guess you can say a promo or a segment between uh damian sandow and jason jordan damian sandow came out and just refused to face jason jordan or uh, jason jordan It'll come back in here, you know, come back, you're going to fight me. I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> Damian Sandow, you know, just, you know, refused to compete with Jason Jordan. I mean, <laughs> Sandow, man, you don't want to fight Jason Jordan? I mean, this guy, Jason Jordan, you know, my thoughts on him. Jason Jordan's pretty good, I guess you can say. You know, they really haven't really showcased this guy at all. But I think Jason Jordan, he could be the next big deal. I don't know. We just have to wait and see what, you know, WWE's going to do with this guy. But I think this guy, I do see silver dollar potential in this guy. So, but Damian Sandow, everybody knows how I feel about Sandow. Sandow is just as good as gold. And, um, you know, I can't wait to see what WWE's going to do with him in the long run. I hope they don't just fuck this up like they do everything else. So, let's just hope they don't do that. Uh, then we get a, a Ascension package, and my God, the Ascension, this is like the fucking segment for me of the night anyway of this episode. I mean, Connor O'Brien and Kenneth Cameron, you know, say what you want about Connor O'Brien. This guy takes a whole lot of heat, you know, people call him a glorified jobber. People call him an idiot, you know, because there's rat gimmick off of NXT. I mean, me, myself, personally, I really didn't find it that funny. But, you know, I like Conor O'Brien anyways. But, you know, him and Co Kenneth, Kim and Kenneth Cameron definitely showing me why they deserve a spot on the roster. Fuck NXT. Get these two on the main roster, you know. So, I mean, you know, the Ascension, you know, I, I already told you guys how I feel about the Ascension. The Ascension are amazing, you know. I'm into them, you know, a whole lot of people, I, I read comments on the shows, on the videos that people had on YouTube on, of the show, and, um, 
you know, people are just blown away already. And that was just only the promo, not the match. And then the match came like a mi minutes afterwards. And I mean, they beat the holy hell out of CJ Parker. Mike Dalton didn't even get tagged in this matchup. That's how much they were beating the hell out of CJ Parker. And then they won with this unique neck breaker flapjack combination. I mean, that is pretty good. Dissension, uh, this whole match, you know, even though it was a squash match, it was kind of like the segment of the night for me, well, match of the night for me. Uh, even though Mike, Michael McGillicuddy and Tyson Kidd, you know, yeah. you know, they're pretty good. They have some damn good matches, I'm not going to lie to you. But, you know, we've seen this before. You know, that's the only thing that, that they make this, like, the match of the night for me. Tyson Kidd and Michael McGillicuddy, we've seen this already. So, you know, that kind of, like, disqualifies it. But, you know, Michael McGillicuddy and Tyson Kidd, Two, like I said earlier in the video, two guys that, you know, careers, not really saying that they were in jeopardy, but NXT has helped their careers out a whole lot. Let's just hope that Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel have a successful tag team run. Michael McGillicuddy, he finds his feel on Raw or SmackDown, whatever show he's on. Um, uh, Kurt, Curtis and Bateman is next week, too. Uh, well, I'll be looking forward to it. I like these two. When they're fighting each other, they have so much, uh, not charisma, but chemistry. You know, being the fact they they know each other long back. I mean, they had a good storyline with Maxine, and you know they were tag team champions back in FCW. So I mean, you know, Curtis and Bateman, they have good chemistry. Uh, well, I look forward to that match next week. Uh, probably so. I mean, Bateman's probably gonna win anyway. So. Pff. I mean, why tune in just to see that? But uh, Seth Rollins will definitely be catching my eye next week. Um, whoever else is on the show will be catching my eye. Oh, yeah, and I forgot Bray Wyatt. Pro, uh, Bray Wyatt promo. Bray Wyatt, like Damian Sandow, just as good as goddamn piece of gold. Bray Wyatt, you know, I just can't wait for... When this guy gets a fucking mic and interrupts John Cena because... You know, one night on Raw, that, you know, I'd be happy. When John Cena goes to run his mouth and Bray Wyatt, the lights just go dim and Bray Wyatt's music just hits and Bray Wyatt comes out of nowhere and just attacks John Cena, beats his ass, and, you know, they have a big old feud and hopefully Wyatt goes over, you know, so I look forward to Bray Wyatt and his future in the WWE as well. You know, I look forward to all of these guys featuring the WWE. Richie Steamboat, you know... Uh, Big E Langston, I want to see what they're going to do with him. Dean Ambrose, I'm not for sure whether he's going to be on the show or not. He wasn't in the package or anything like that. But Brad Maddox, Corey Graves, Jake Carter, Paige, Raquel Diaz. I can't wait to see what you know WWE's going to do with these people, what they're going to do on NXT. I think, myself personally, I think that you know they should actually throw belts on this show. I mean, because you just have a bunch of people, a bunch of talent fighting over nothing, you know, I guess, you know, the crowd, you know, wants to see a show, but seriously, you know, WWE, you actually have to give these hardworking people, and I'm going to say people, superstars and divas, but hardworking people at the end of the day, you have to give these guys something to fight for, WWE, you have to give them titles, belts, crowns, medals, I don't care. WWE, you have to give these people something to fight for. And uh, an NXT World Heavyweight Championship, that sounds pretty good right about now. Um, tag team champions, hey, you can throw some tag teams together, slap them all together. I mean, that's good with me. And then the Divas, hey, that's good with me as well. But um, this is large with another video. And um, I'll be talking about more of NXT as more weeks to come. So look out for those kind of videos. Um, follow me on Twitter, Lil RJ Unlimited. I will tweet. I will follow you back. Um, so I'm um, slogging another video. And uh, peace. <laughs>